What's up, y'all? It's Jeff Cobb, and you're listening to Ricky and Clive Wrestling Show on Social Suplex Podcast Network. You're listening to the Ricky and Clive Wrestling Show. Listener discretion is advised at all times. Thank you once again for downloading and listening to another episode of the Ricket and Clive Wrestling Show, part of the Social Suplex Podcast Network. My name is Clive, and before I introduce our co-host, I'm going to bring in our guest first because I, I, I want to have a wee chat with the person who will be who's been a constant to the show. First of all, Rance Morris, how are you? And welcome to the show once again. It's good to be back with my family, bro. Yeah. I'm good. How you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. Uh, it's been a shit day work-wise, but I'm here. I'm enjoying some wrestling chat, or I will enjoy some wrestling chat, and I'm excited for the, the evening ahead. But speaking of, uh, our special guest for the evening, Michael Sidgwick, thank you for coming on. How are you tonight? Well, hey, guys. Uh, <laughs> thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be on the Ralph and and and, and Clark show. Thank you. You sound like Ralph. Uh, Ralph. You sound like Richard Pryor doing a white man. Well, all black people sound like that when we do when we impersonate white voices. It's just it's it's a thing. I don't know why. So you sound like Tiger Woods. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, Tiger does have a dark hue. However. I'm leave it at that. Ralph, uh, Ricky, hello. <laughs> when we get to we get to the part where you actually introduce one half of the show. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It is my absolute pleasure and privilege to welcome to the show once again, for your ears only, the one and only, Perfect Ten, Ricky. Good evening. The goodest of evenings to you, Ricky. Hi. Oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. You've been a busy chap today, haven't you? Me? Uh-huh. You want to tell Hi. the listeners what you've been doing? Or you've been an excited Actually, I don't chap? know. You, you, want, you want to tell me what I've been doing? I have no idea. That's a scary proposition just to leave it out there. Like, you do you you really could could like if you want do you want to get sponsored by Point Up? Is is that like where we're going? Because you know uh, if you just I, ask Ricky what he's done all day, I you know. I have I have been hard at work all day. I have no time to pay a visit to Pam. Right, first of all, nobody from your work listens to the podcast. As far as I'm aware. I don't know about that. The old GH, mate. What, big jihadi boy? That's, oh, Jesus. Uh, no, but you took some... You excelled. XL being the keyword in a specific task for another project that we've got planned. I did. Um, should, we, should we just tell them what we're probably planning over the next few weeks? Mm-hmm. So, well, tonight, I don't really know what the plan is tonight, if I'm going to be honest with you, but that could just be classic Rick and Clive. Um, see where the hell we end up. And then later on tonight, for an episode that's going to be released a couple of weeks or so down the road, we have round one of our bracket, um, 64 wrestlers. So 32 matchups. Uh, we'll be doing that in a podcast later on tonight and then I've already spoken to the young boy so in a system we'll reach out to him and Jeremy to get them on for the for the last 32 and so forth which could break down in a, at least it will be a two-parter maybe it'll be a three-parter we'll wait and see um, we're still trying to hopefully get the fatal four-way 
uh, quiz match up if we can and then we'll probably record another episode just so we can take like two or three weeks off recording mm-hmm. uh, during that Christmas and New Year period Can I make two suggestions? What if we what if we start what if we release the one that we're going to do later on tonight on the 16th so that'll okay. be that'll be three weeks of bracketologies and then we do the fatal four way in the new year so next week we can do a a year retrospective could do does that excite you at all? Because the end of the year, the end of end of days is upon us. We need to start talking about what's been good this year and what's been shite. No, that's fine. And I've got Caleb's dates when he can when he's available. Mm-hmm. Um, but all the time he seems to be working, uh, and obviously he does like um, shifts that work patterns that doesn't really tie in with when we record. Um, so yeah, we can certainly try and work it around. And even if it means we record the Fatal 4 way and release it in the first week in Jan or whenever, mm-hmm. if we can at least get that in the bag. I have a question. Go for it. Um, again, thanks for having me on. Um, very appreciative <laughs> to be a part of the Ricky and Clive family. Uh, <laughs> oh, I know what this is heading. I just, just want to know, how did a one-on-one rematch turn into a fatal four-way overnight. I'm just curious. Well, And I, I heard the show, so I know yeah. literally how it happened. I'm just, just well, saying. Was, well, Jeremy wanted in, but Jeremy also did concede that, well, I'll hold off, he'll hold off, because the one-on-one rematch should happen. And then somehow we, like, finagled Caleb into this, and then all of a sudden, we? Josh was like, well, <laughs> well, to be fair, to be fair, I think... I want to say Josh made reference to Caleb as well, but then basically Josh just threw down the gauntlet and says, fuck it, fatal, fatal four-way, and opened it up. So, I mean, for the record, let the record show, I ain't never, I ain't never scared. So I'm, I'm, I'm down for a fatal four-way. However... I'm starting to feel like Batista in 2000, whatever it was, when he got when he kept saying I was screwed, because uh, thanks to my good friend Mr. Ralph over there, you know I was uh, I wasn't screwed, but I was I was lightly finagled out of a fair shot at winning, but I see that because Josh is fantastic and he was deserving. Now my rematch, which was rightly given to me has been lightly finagled away from me. It's cool, though. I, I, I appreciate y'all making me have to earn this. I appreciate it. Well, two things, mate. First, you've watched WWE for nearly 30 years. You're used to some dodgy, dodgy shenanigans from a general manager position. You're used to viewing that, so you're used to that. Two, I'm saying... Plans change? Plans change. And Times change. Clearly they don't. Clearly they don't. This this is going down on record, and I'll it's it's going to be on air tomorrow night when it goes out. You get a one on one rematch, and see even if you win the fatal four way, you get to pick your challenger for the next match. Well, I appreciate that, and uh, you know I don't I don't want you to give me any special treatment, even though you know the situation may call for it. Because I mean it is what it is, but just know. I'm coming for the crown, and all respect to those involved because all three of those guys are fantastic at their wrestling knowledge. Uh, Josh was white, right? Caleb may know more than all of us. Actually, <laughs> it's scary, but nonetheless, I'm coming for for. I'm the uncrowned champion. Mm-hmm. I am the uncrowned Ricky and Clive Invitational Champion. I'm coming for my crown. And see. Although the pre- the idea of whoever is eliminated first just gets disconnected from the call, <laughs> that is harsh, Ricky. So what if we gave those people who've been eliminated the chance to be a quiz master for the next round? I could do if you want. <laughs> well, that's I actually th- good. That's actually good, actually. We could do that. Richards wants to press hang up on somebody. That's all it is. No, no. 
I will press hang up actually because that's quite good. So if say say Caleb goes out first, Caleb can then ask the next round of questions. And then when Caleb starts giving the questions, I no longer need to be there because I don't record it and edit it. <laughs> so I can press the hang up button and I'm done. That sounds an easy nice fuck to me. <laughs> The talent of Ricky and Clive, ladies and gentlemen. The talent. That sounds like an easy night's work. Listen. And then I'll never know who wins it unless that said person tells me because I won't listen to the show. Because <laughs> the talent has left. <laughs> oh, y'all are hearing the truth behind Ricky and Clive now for the first time. So, this is a tenuous segue. Segway. But speaking of the talent of a, of the duo, what the fuck was Jeff Hardy doing last night? Oh God, Jesus Christ! Oh. I, I'm I was scared for that man's life, and I and like I saw it coming when he started throwing the stuff. When they started going towards the table, we've learned in wrestling speak: if a table is set up, the table shall be used. That's one of the wrestling commandments. So I knew once I started going over there, somebody going through the table. When I saw Jeff Hardy oh, slide no. everything off, go ahead. No, no, it wasn't even a stable spot itself. It was a, it was the worst. It was like no one in their right mind just thought I should move the steps or move the table over in the first place somewhere yes. else. Dreadful, especially after the shit that his brother went through a couple of months ago and the backlash his brother received a couple of months ago. And he goes and does something like that. Yep. And you know, so many people want to blame Jeff for that. And yes, Jeff is a daredevil and oftentimes doesn't give a shit. But that's on the producer because that was a set spot. That table was set there before the match ever started. Jeff didn't set the table up. Okay. So that's on the producer. For not thinking about that through. Jeff was just fulfilling the spot that was worked out before the match. And um, the, 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 I saw a tweet that, sum, that summarizes perfectly. The most Jeff Hardy thing in the history of Jeff Hardy was he does that spot, bangs his head on the back of the stairs, pins Elias, <laughs> then grabs the tambourine and starts clapping That's with funny. the tambourine to the music. <laughs> that is the most Jeff Hardy thing in the history of Jeff Hardy but the thing is, like, I don't put any blame on Jeff. Like, I mean, you blame them all for, I think, for not moving the stairs out of the way. But there's that old saying that, like, you know, the referees and the trainers or the coach in a boxing ring or an MMA are there to protect the fighters because the fighters just don't give up, you know what, and they'll just go all out. So sometimes you've got to protect individuals from themselves because they don't have a no button or we don't have a quit button or any kind of fear in them and that's what that kind of reminded me of just sheer stupidity with, with the stairs especially but in wrestling it's violent enough without like adding more more stupidity to it and, 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 and not like factoring in these other risks but you know what, Rick? I'm sorry, real quick, real quick, uh, Clive, and I'll, I'll be done with it. Uh, part of me thinks, and I'm deducing this based on deductive reasoning, right? WWE wanted that to happen. I don't know if they wanted him to hit stairs, but they wanted that spot because as soon as it happened, all over every social media is just nothing but their social media, I'm talking about. It's just retweets and retweets and retweets and reposts of that spot. Their main Twitter account, the network Twitter account, all the different country Twitter accounts, like everybody over and over and over again on their Instagram over and over and over again. So, yeah, this is what they wanted to happen. And I don't, again, I don't I don't think they wanted him to hit his head on the stairs. God, I hope they did it. But they wanted that spot because Jeff Hardy is known for those photographic moments of those crazy swantons. So, yes. Somebody needs to get their ass chewed out. And if it's Vince, it's Vince. But the producer's number one, because the producer's the guy who okays the spot in the first place. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but, that was a failure uh, on all parts. On all parts. 
say that was my issue with it was just there's not so much the actual spot itself. Similar to the Matt Hardy bump, like that was just with the table. Obviously, we never anticipated him hitting his head off the concrete, but what was going to happen when there's just pure concrete under the table? But obviously, they shot it a little further than anticipated. So, like the actual spot itself didn't, wasn't like, like we saw a lot of bad spots in wrestling. It was the aftermath of it, and it was just that's what the bad thing about the Matt Hardy thing, and it's the same here. It's like no thought process and trying to at least limit the damage that can happen to him, you know, with, with the stairs being there. Um, so, like I said, I'm sure everyone was all for this, the, the table spot itself, but it's like just move the stairs out of the way for crying out loud. I don't know if it was a space issue where there was a couple of inches more th- or less on each side, but it's just a bad look all round. They're all to blame. And for it to happen yep. after there's been a couple of scares in AEW with Alex Reynolds yep. as well, why on earth would they go through with that? And Unnecessary. Uh, Sami Zayn giving Daniel Bryan a brain buster onto the apron on Friday night as well. Uh, don't get me wrong, that was beautifully sickening to watch and sickeningly beautiful but that's just not required especially if what Daniel Bryan's saying is true that this is his last run they're just I, can, I will stick up for that and the re- only reason I'll stick up for that is because we're, we have the beauty of now there's no fans in the stadium so they can do things um, from an angle standpoint that make it look worse and nobody can be there to notice it right so if you know if you if you pay really close attention to the spot, he didn't drop him on his head, he dropped him on his shoulder. Mm-hmm. He turned it just a little bit, so it looked a whole lot worse than it really was. Mm-hmm. Um and those are those are and I might be jumping the gun with this, but I'm confident in saying those two are most assuredly the most savvy workers in that locker room. Probably. So I don't think they would even bring up the spot. Remember, when Brian came back, and I, I don't know if he specifically asked for this or not, but when Brian came back, he entrusted Sammy and Kevin with with him because he knew they would take care of him. Uh-huh. Um, so, again, that's one of those, was it necessary? No. But, I, but that was more illusionary of, yeah, that shit really was bad, but actually... That was one of the safer bumps they could have taken, although it was on the hardest part of the rink. Okay. Oh. Sorry. I was on mute. Yeah, no, I would agree with that. Um, like, the apron bumps, if they're done correctly and as safe as possible, they don't bother me as much. And like you say, it's Daniel Bryan and... Uh, Sami Zayn are two of the safest workers you'll find um, I'm just on I know we don't really have any kind of schedule but I've just seen that Tony Khan was doing a, a conference call and says Moxley's not working Wrestle Kingdom yep I saw that yes kind of disappointed you shouldn't be because, and the only reason I say you shouldn't be is because of the pandemic Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't. I'm not meaning like, like I'm not factoring in any like health things. I'm just talking about purely like kind of this point where we don't get to see that matchup or get to see him there. Maybe maybe they're working as who knows, but um, but yeah. They're, oh, they're not. They're not working us. I, I no. You I know, know. Let, well, let me let me let me well, let me walk that back. Everything in wrestling could be work. However. Moxley has a pregnant wife at home and he's had to quarantine for two weeks there and quarantine for two weeks on the way back. I just don't see him wasting a month for one match where he's got to lose because like the big the the biggest issue they've had is they should have stripped him of the title a long time ago because they stripped him of a title last year when he didn't defend it in like two months because of a hurricane and a, and a tsunami. Mm-hmm. So like he won it in February and like he's he hasn't defended it since hell April. They so they should have stripped him of it already. I'm sorry, Bruce. go ahead, Clive. No, I'm just thinking it was roughly that April time, I think. Yeah. So they should have stripped him of it a long time ago and moved on with their life. 
Moxley will be this. back when things are back, but right, it doesn't make sense for him to have the belt, especially when the whole purpose of the United States uh, of the IWGP US belt, the whole purpose of it is so that when they tour in the US, that champion can main event the shows. He can't be on television. Mm-hmm. So what's the point? Just take it off of him, ship him of it. There'll be no beef. There'll be no issue. He'll understand. They'll understand. And just let him be, um, for lack of a better term, a ronin, right? Just a, 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 a samurai without a master and just go from feud to feud and leave and come when he wants. Let him be Let him be their Brock. Their yeah, special attraction, yep. Yeah. What are the chances it could be defended in America? It'll never happen. It, it, it'll never happen on TV. They maybe at a house show, but it'll never happen on TV. And we have to understand too. Tony Khan has changed a lot of his early ideologies because at first he wanted to work with everybody, and you guys can do whatever you want. And then boys would go out and get hurt wrestling for another company, or boys would go out and get COVID wrestling for another company. And he's like, "No, nah, stop that. I got to take care of my company. I got to take care of, of my investment," which is completely understandable. So while Mox has a deal with New Japan, AEW has first rights to Moxley. So unless it works for both parties, Tony ain't going to let him just go do something random for no reason. And what it looked like, the AEW world champion who hasn't lost a match in all of 2020 going to go job for a, mm-hmm. for a lesser title to Kenta. No diss no. to Kenta. No diss, but think about that. No, I agree, which begs the question then, what happens tomorrow night? I, I don't think, if if Tony wants to make sure that Moxley's still, still in America, and if it was partly Tony's decision, then I wonder if they're not actually taking the belt off him just yet. They want to keep the title on him, or if they are it's going to be like a quick rematch. I, f- I feel as if if they're still wanting him to be an AEW, then he's going to be involved in some program or another of some importance over the over the festive period. Well, my initial thought, my initial thought was that they moved this title match up to now, so that Max could go to Japan, quarantine, get that over with, get some pu- publicity for AEW. And coming back home, and then Renee got pregnant, and then I knew instantly that was off. That was off mm-hmm. because they've already dealt with COVID already as a family. It's probably part so, of maybe Moxley's decision as well. He's a very, for all of the, I'm not gonna say the bad things, but for all of the personality quirks that we know about him, negative or not, one of the best pop personality quirks he has is he's always been a savvy person in terms of knowing what's best for him. Mm-hmm. He has no problem saying, nah, bro, I'm not going to do it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, yeah, you, you're right. He probably was the one that said, I, I don't think so. But we, we, from what we've read and what we've known, what we've come to, to understand, Tony is very happy and comfortable saying, nah, bro, you can't go to that company right now. So. What else? I'm trying to think what else. To, no, in fact, what are the... What are the travel restrictions? Because there's been folk turning up on NXT left, right and centre. Pete Dunne came back over. Grizzled Young Veterans came over. Well, it depends. It depends on the com- on the country, but it's very easy. Let's let's think of GYV for, for just for a second, right? By the way, who I popped audibly when I saw them pop out of the crowd. Oh, I get spoiled. That was spoiled for me, so the... The surprise was ruined, but it was still good to see them. <laughs> um, it's a two-week quarantine, I think, from UK to America. Right. Okay. They could have been here. They could have been here for a month. We just didn't know. Possibly. So you know, same with Pete Dunne. They they could have been here forever. And Pete Dunne was know? locked up in a gym somewhere. <laughs> well, that's true. We know. We know that. Look at how he looks. Pumping iron like a mofo. <laughs> And that's and that's ve- the dude is vegan looking like that. It's crazy. It's so good to see them back. I'd love to just see those three as a team, but I mean, I'm not. I'm not 
uh, annoyed with the setup because I think this Kings of the new Kings of NXT thing's g- good fun. Danny Birch is and- arguably more comfortable on the mic than Oni Lorcan is, so they've got plenty of people that can talk in stead of Dunn and Lorcan. McAfee, one of the better promos, is in the business just now. He puts a lot of people to shame, in my opinion. Agreed. And and Pete's tagging with another British tag team because I know Oni isn't British, but he's British by he's he's British by association uh-huh, by, by this point. Yeah. Do you think that person who came down during the ladder match last week was McAfee or someone else? It's McAfee. He got the same damn mask and does the same jump to the ro- to the apron. It's McAfee. Yeah. Right. Just wondering about that because do they trust? I I know McAfee. Uh, bumps like a pro a beautiful bump it is at that but would you trust someone as inexperienced as him in a war games match yeah um, he probably he probably comes in last as well aye I'd be disappointed if he came in last because that would be absolutely expected I'd like to see him come in second you know, um, or some something that will be out will be completely out of the realm of, of believability. But if you if you look at the Adam Cole match, he did he went out of his way to do everything in that match that nobody thought he would do. Mm-hmm. So like he said, he bought a ring right after college when he got to the league because this is what he's always wanted to do. So, like, he's no stranger from taking bumps and being comfortable in this environment. It's just doing it live for the biggest company in the world. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think they have any problem with it. If they had a problem with it, they wouldn't have promoted him as the lead guy for the other team. That's true. Just wondering if there's maybe a swear there and that someone else that's going to be taking his place on the night. Who would you guess if it was? I mean, oh... Rich Holland would have been perfect if he wouldn't have shattered his leg. Rich Holland, I know. Ricky, have you got any ideas? Or do you think it is McAfee? No, it's definitely McAfee. Oh, well, that's my theory blown out of the water then. Fine then. Well, the, so the real question if you're talking about Mysteries NXT is who's the second ghost face? Uh, you think it's Austin Theory, don't you? I do. However, I am willing to be su- pleasantly surprised because Austin Theory is a piece of shit and I'd really like to see it be somebody I can get behind. Because I love what Candace and Johnny are doing right now. It is rather humanous. I like the... I like that this sort of whole war games thing has been slowly but surely building up without us even realising it because until a couple of weeks ago I didn't really think they were doing a war games. It, it didn't happen at Survivor Series. Uh, the schedule for takeovers was a bit off. There were no no indications on news feeds, journalist, journalism sites that it was happening. So to see that and think, hold on a minute, Candice literally ran over a war tank. Uh, <laughs> Candice and Sochi have been against at each other's throats for a long time. The the coming together slowly but surely of the new kings of NXT. So they have been putting those things in place over the last few weeks, so they must have been sitting on this news for quite a while. I think it would have been better, personally, if there was a bit more sort of... like I know this is a small thing, but see if they announced if Regal did his War war Games cry on TV, that would have just sealed the deal perfectly. And that was when you found out, rather than the news, the sort of Twitter thing. Do you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I also had a, a questionable feed of NXT that week and it seemed to miss the advert entirely of Shotzi Blackheart talking about war games. I didn't see that until later on that day. War games is Well, it? I'm sorry, go ahead. It's this Saturday, isn't it, war games? It is next week. Next week? Oh. Yeah, it's next Sunday, I think, because this Sunday is a tribute to the troops. That's is it not December 6th? It's December 6th, that's Sunday. So it is Sunday. 
Oh, snap. Yes. <laughs> I got, oh, snap. I was worried there. Okay, so I got a question for you guys. Um, I know, So you guys, I was going to say I haven't heard you talk about it, but you guys don't really talk too much current product. Sometimes you do. But I haven't had a chance to talk to you guys about Leon Ruff. How do you feel about that whole thing and not only him coming out of nowhere to win the title, but him putting his big boy pants on and like standing up to two of the top superstars in the company and in the triple threat now? Okay. I'll let you answer first because I've yet to watch any wrestling from this last week. Oh, damn it. Well, you you know you know what who he is and what happened, right? Yep. Okay, okay. The segment with um, <clears throat> uh, Kale. Yeah, so in general, I don't necessarily, I'm not necessarily asking what, it, I'm just asking. So oftentimes in wrestling, there'll be a one, two, three kid moment or a Mikey Whipwreck moment or a Colin Delaney moment where a guy who's been known as a quote-unquote jobber gets that one big win. Well, Santino Morello is probably the most popular, right? Other than the kid. This dude not only sl- slid and beat Gargano for the title, but like now in a span of two or three weeks, I'm not going to say he looks as legit as, oh, I think he can beat Priest or Gargano. But, like, he's not going into this as the same underdog Leon Ruffer would get beat by two kicks and a punch. Like, he looks like he's a legit dude now. Mm-hmm. And I, do you guys like the way that they did that? Do y'all like him, them bringing in... Leon Ruff is not known to, like, diehards, but to the wrestling populace he is. And how about, you know, and win the second biggest title in the company out of nowhere? Like, the whole situation behind it are y'all cool with it do you like it are you against it uh, i've i've always say and been a believer of <clears throat> throw something to the wall and see if it sticks like spaghetti yep or something else um so that's where it kind of like when they done the gender mahal thing i was like don't like it let us give it a few weeks or a month to see how it goes before forming a proper opinion on it. Um, and I kind of look at it in the same way. I was like, right, well, they've done it. It looks okay so far. Let's see what happens on Sunday and then take it from there. Um, I don't mind, as you say, it's got a quote-unquote jobber-type person or a mid cap person just kind of coming out of nowhere and winning it. Um, like I say, sometimes it's nice to throw out that element of surprise. But if for signs... I would be more worried if in the last few weeks, so obviously I said I haven't watched last week yet, but if there was big glaring signs and we're like, wait, this was just clearly this person's in over her head or it's just completely the wrong decision, you could tell that from the, from the get-go. I think Sunday will tell us quite a bit. Um, I don't know if <coughs> we expect them to retain or anything, but that's it. it wouldn't surprise me if he retains, just, just an element to see where it ends up going. Um, so yeah I don't mind seeing stuff like this I don't want to see it all the time and I think you need to be careful on who you do it with but let's say there's an element of let's see if it's going to work before making our mind up on it and, and if it doesn't work then fine you just, you just notch one away and just be like well you know what we, at least we, we tried something different didn't really go over the way we wanted it to go so we'll just continue moving forward mm-hmm. I just wonder, was it really necessary? Mm. Like, what what made them think, right, okay, we've had a jobber on 205, Raw, SmackDown, wherever, a few matches in NXT, let's give him the title. What, what thought process happened for that to become a reality? I just, well, if I may make, if I may, if I may please, make an assumption. Please, please. Well, number one, I think it's pretty well well known or understood that fans look as at championships like they matter, but ultimately they're just props to the company. So ultimately, that title was a prop in the feud between Gargano and Priest. Mm-hmm. But to the Leon Ruff being the guy doing that, 
Leon Ruff came from Evolve, right? He was one of the first guys signed from Evolve when they started making the the talent the talent exchange and then Transition. Evolve went under, right? If you if you pay if you believe or if you believe what the quote unquote journalist and the wrestling people say, that dude I don't know. is oh, <laughs> that dude is unanimously loved. People love him so much backstage and love how he sells for people and love what he does for people in the ring. That th- th- again, this don't believe what I'm saying. Look it up for yourself. The reports are that people were fighting over who got to wrestle him next. <laughs> like that's how much people love him backstage. That's the thing that will carry you far. The way you carry yourself backstage, the way you're able to put your opponent over, the way you make somebody look good, right? Mm -hmm. And Leon, and again, I'm glad you brought it up because most people don't remember him. But yes, he did not just job on NXT. He's jobbed on 205. He's jobbed on Raw, on SmackDown, on every brand except for UK because he couldn't go over there. Um, So I think it was a cool way to kind of give him some shine and build him up in a better way, you know, than just being the guy throughout there to get his head kicked in uh, and to kind of shake things up between Gargano and Priest. Because remember, when he beat Gargano, the knock was Gargano was was just like Sasha. He can win the belt, but he can never defend it. Mm -hmm. And that was his first defense, which is why Gargano was so obsessed with facing a quote-unquote jobber and his hubris got thrown in his face. Mm-hmm. So I just think it's a prop for the feud. It's simultaneously building up a guy who may not be as talented as these guys, but backstage, frankly, deserves it. Interesting that the, someone like that's held in such high esteem, just basically a newbie in terms of WWE anyway. Well, <laughs> his first match, I believe, was against Aleister Black, and Aleister kicked the black off of his skin. <laughs> and like he sold it like he was shot in the face and instantly people were like oh I need that do you remember a while ago it was Dijakovic he cut a promo about his Croatian heritage and then he was out injured for a while with his knee but yeah. that match he basically the, the referee signalled for the bell and he cycling kicked the soul out of this poor bastard's body. <laughs> it's beautiful. It, it was sickening in his six foot seven reach. Just all of it, all of his pent up rage, his cheesy, hammy um, boss in a computer game beat him up voice just went into that cycling kick and it was delicious. It just reminded me of that. You're talking about the the kick that kicked the black off his skin. I was, go back and watch it. It was so bad they had a rematch the next week, so he could get take the kick again. It was like that bad. I need to. I can't remember. Did you see the fall, following week? Did it come down and, and it was white? <laughs> no, but his his skin might have been a little lighter. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he kicked the hell out of him, bro. And it and it was it was to quote my brother Clive, it was delicious. So did was he then called Alistair Blacker that next week? <laughs> Look, I just all I know is I'm glad you two acknowledge who the hell Alistair is, because my co-host refused to acknowledge his existence. You you. You're not alone, as a fellow black turned white person once said. Uh, (laughs) 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 Um, It it bothers me greatly as well. Don't worry about it. I'm on your side. It doesn't bother me because I love your co-host. Co-host in plural or co-host individual? Oh, he's in trouble. Uh huh. Yes, you, sir. Yes, sir. What was that, say? It sounded like you said, "I love your co-host." <laughs> Singular, because we know. Well, I mean, I mean, we know you have an obsession with Carl. We know this. What, well, yeah, well, one of them has just recently come back, but 
you know, is also quite unpredictable on a week to week basis. <laughs> but, I mean, I love I love both of them. Okay. Um, I I did have a pl- not a plan as such, but I wanted to basically say the last wee while I've been enjoying NXT a lot more than I have the last few months. I think gearing up towards War Games, Cameron Grimes has has been hilarious Jesus to watch. Christ. And a sleeper hit for one of my favourite matches of 2020 was the strap match that um, Dexter Loomis was in with Roderick Strong and Great American Bash. I thoroughly enjoyed that match, so they're having another strap match with Cameron Grimes at War Games. Looking forward to that. But also, Rhea, Rhea, well, as well, Rhea Ripley and Io Shirai destroyed each other in a, a fucking physical, physical battle. But you know the thing that I'm enjoying probably the most? The Zia Lee. Zia Lee thing that's going on just now. What is I love that? It. Any, any idea who you think this mystery boss lady is? The rumour is Miko. See, I thought that as well. But they, they're saying that she's only just went over to NXT UK. Yeah, and then I I don't care about this, but some people do. Um, there is the fact that Zaya and Big Boa are Chinese and Miko is Japanese. Yes. And I don't know if they would want to mix that together. Um, but it's got to be somebody. I don't know who it could be. It's got to be somebody worthwhile. Oh. Uh-huh. The, I think if it is Miko, there is a possibility that that will get him in a bit of scrutiny because if they're not going to tell us that they're actually of different nationalities, that's a wee bit ignorant. Now, other than, other than strictly the nationality, like, all of the measurables make sense. There's got to be an OG... Miko's been wrestling longer than I've been alive, probably. It's got to be somebody who is... What if it was Karen a... Q? I'd be so fucking pissed, bro. <laughs> <laughs> really? I'd be so pissed. Karen younger than Zaya. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but... What, think... Why would they be scared of Karen? I know, I'm just I'm just trying to tie something to Zaya, I suppose. Did it be teamed, was it like 2018, 19 or something? Yeah, for like a cup of coffee, because Karen got uh, released real quick. So I, so I don't know, I'm just trying to tie something to her. Uh, and like you said, I thought the Miko was... The Miko? Why did I call her that? Uh, Miko was um, purely NXT UK, on-screen, sometimes off-screen talent. Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe Uncle Paul gave her the, gave her a few more dollars to come stateside. And even that, like, you know, if she's going to kind of flip flop between both, like if we're talking about quarantine, etc., you know, that's like two weeks at each place at a time mm-hmm. for a few episodes or whatever. Um, I don't know because if she that's... does come over and she needs to quarantine, so it should be two weeks. But then. She disappears again, but then you won't see her again for at least another month by the time you need to quarantine back in the UK to come back out and quarantine again, etc. That's a good question, though. If it is a Miko, who could it be? Does it have to be a woman? Could it be a man? I think it is a woman, though. I think there was reference. There was some pronouns, pal, used. Maybe wrong there. Yeah. No, it looked like a woman because they showed the person sitting in the chair. Mm-hmm. So you're right. It looked like a woman, but I mean, okay. So who is on the roster currently that it could be that? Because it's got to be somebody signed, right? Well, hmm, uh, what's her face? Mercedes Martinez. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't have a problem with that. Although, Mer- so Mercedes, Chelsea, and Santana need to be on the main roster today mm-hmm. because you took them off of their programs to put them on the main roster and then you've played this game of nah I'm gonna wait for months like they need to be on the main roster today so I'd be a little disappointed but I, I wouldn't be I wouldn't doesn't, hate it doesn't she need to be like Chinese I suppose like I don't think just so defense, just Chuck Norris is one of the baddest dudes in the in the world and he's not Chinese he's one of the I'm, baddest martial arts in the world the only reason I say that is because she's been getting notes from her 
family back in China kind of thing, but... Oh, okay, I got you. Uh, that's the only reason. Um, you know, so for me, if it's going to be something like Mercedes Martinez, it's like, well, why the hell are we getting notes from China? I, I don't know. Especially if she's um, dead. What if it's... What if... <laughs> what if it's Ronda Rousey? Oh... <laughs> That's just me. That's just me talking shit now. And the big reveal was like Zaya Lee was there, and then Rhonda just came out of the the shadows, and someone was doing her hair, and she said, "This is all a fucking work." And then they just ended the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? I, I enjoyed Zaya Lee's method acting because it looked as if she hadn't seen a brush or a makeup brush in about a year when she was in that car going to the warehouse or whatever it was. And it reminded me of the time when ne- Neville lost the cruiserweight championship, and he turned up the next night. Clearly, hadn't slept a, nin- a wink. Hair a mess, baggy eyes, and also when when Seth Rollins had found out his missus was pregnant, and he came in <laughs> like fat bastard. Dog. He feuded with Rey Mysterio for a, over a year because Rey told him, hey, man, good job. Congratulations being a dad. And like, no! <laughs> that, that, was the fir- that was their first interaction, mm-hmm. which led to this year-long feud. Um, no, I, yeah, those, I remember those. And, hey, shout out to Big Boa. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen him work. He's really... He's he's good to be so young in his wrestling career. Mm-hmm. He's got a lot. Of, he's, he's got a lot of potential. I like Big Boa. I do know it'd be great actually. No, no. He has the he has the facial features similar to Far Eastern people. What if the master is actually the Okona Reeves? Well, he's, I mean, you know, <laughs> end of, end the <of> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Cocaine Kona, baby. Where has he been? Hey, he's he's South Asian. No Southeast Asian. Not quite South Asian. I'm sorry, Mooch, O'Brien, Glive, Ricky. I, so many people shoot names and kayfabe names. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, it's all right. Like we revealed our actual real names on the podcast before. Yeah, Ralph and Clark. And then, and we continue this pretense of actually calling each other Rick and Clive on it. <laughs> well, everybody calls me Ray. Like, I introduce myself as Rance. Like, so... <laughs> See, honest, like, honestly, I wish we never called it this. Oh, really? Aye. Uh, Why? Because their names are not Ricky and Clive. I know, but the backstory behind it was absolutely fucking... It was absolutely hilarious, though. I know. It's just like just border. It's not even borderline. It was just absolutely ridiculous. I know, but still. Well, why don't we just repackage ourselves in? Do you know? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> just call. Y'all it. getting sent back down to NXT to get repackaged? <laughs> because there's Jeremy's going to remo- Jeremy's going to remove us from the network until we prove ourselves and then bring us back. Well, <laughs> gotta go to the farm system. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> there's a lot of rebranding involved. Logos, uh, Twitter handles, all that shit. What if we just change the name of the podcast to a Twitter handle, but keep keep everything else the same, just because we can't be on just being lazy? Well, can... by the way, I'm curious if you don't mind me asking, who's the guy that got you your your logo? Hmm. That was uh, uh, Sir Michael Fergus. Co- correct, but who who's oh, the, the lies on? Uh, that 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 led you to Sir Michael Fergus. You were the liaison, Manelli. Okay, thank you. I yeah, just, I didn't. I didn't know that. Clive I just got up one day, set up and showed me some some photos, and we kind of picked them. Oh, this is nice. And then, yeah. Man, I'm the I'm I'm I got One Nation Radio's logo. I got Keep It Strong Styles logo. I got the new Social Suplex logo. I got our logo and your logo. Now, Mike did them. But because of Caleb, I had a relationship with Michael, and he had done a bunch of stuff for me. And so I was like, "Well, let me let me let me look out for the family." 
See, that's the type of guy. That's the type of guy I am. I'm wearing your logo on my shirt right you are, now. You are. Yeah, Shout out to that's Ranch. the type of guy I am. Shout out to Ranch. Shout out to SMC. And shout out to shout out to the Caleb Baldwin. Oh, for fuck's sake. At I am Caleb B. SMC. Listen SMC. to his podcast right here on the Social Supplies Podcast Network. Those are the days, bro. The SMC. Wow. What would you treat if, like, this is just purely hypothetical, Ricky, but if we were to have a different name for the podcast, what would it be? Well, I don't know. I've just been put on a spot. Brian um, does all the work and Moose shows up. No. <laughs> no. Weekly. <laughs> I would probably say something along the lines of the perfect 10 and friend. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> and and the logo, the logo could be you, like, like your upper half of body, face, everything. And your lower you're half. A, and you're wearing a white t-shirt with my face plastered right all over it, like front and center. He's thought about this. Can you tell? He's thought about this already. Or we could have Honest, I couldn't tell you what we would call it. I, I quite I like Ricky and Clive. I like What if we just called know. it just like Sidgwick? All caps. All caps. Combine our names together and just come up with something random. Booch <laughs> Bruce. What about not not another fucking wrestling podcast? <laughs> That works. Or we just go keeping it Scottish style. <sighs> Gimmick infringement and everything. I know. And make just do the same logo but do it in Tartan. That's it. Well, hey, you can't say shit because what? They they stole social suplex. That's a whole suplex line. That's true. <laughs> one one nation Scotland. <laughs> if only Ricky, eh? Eh? If only it was if one only. nation. Oh, well, hell, St. Nicola might get us to vote next year, or she's going to certainly put it out there to that clown down south. Did you just say St. Nicola? No, I said Nicola. That would have been funny if you wrote you... She, is, she is anything but a saint right now in my eyes. Because of the lock. Oh, aye, because of the. Yes, she's handled it so badly these last few weeks. So the Outsider badly. Scots. That's it. The Outsider Scots. Do you know what an outsider is in Scotland? Vice versa. That's what we just call ourselves. Oh, Jesus Christ. Rance doesn't get that. Rance, I'm going to send you a photo of what a vice versa chocolate looks like, right? Okay, I'm, I'm totally gang because I'm so, I'm so, I have no idea what's going on. Uh, an outsider in Scotland is the, the outside of a loaf of bread. Yep, which I don't eat. Oh. Now, plain bread, an outsider toasted is wowzerific. You don't eat, you don't eat bread? Now and again, huh? Oh, shit. That looks good. <laughs> Should you see why he's calling, it, calling us vice versa? Yeah. yeah yes, it, it makes perfect sense, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Um, did you have anything? What, what do you want to talk some more wrestling? We're we just gonna chill because I'm good with either way. Well, we we have got plans for tonight, and I've actually not got a quiz. Ricky, have you got a quiz? Nope, it was your turn. It was not. Was it not? I did the Marvel and DC one last week. So you did, right? Let me just wing this in, right? Here we go. Oh, god, right? Ricky, Ricky, Clive, Clive, Ranch, it's quiz time. That's a new, that's a new jingle. Rance, what's your buzzer? Um, you know, you just talked about uh, you just you just mentioned Seth Rollins because he was pre- because uh, losing his mind because he got pregnant. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna go with Seth Rollins and say the greater good. Mine's just gonna be who better than Canyon. Oh, shout out to Canyon. Oh, can we, this is one thing I want to talk about real quick. Did you see the stuff that happened to WrestleJoy? 
Uh, I saw one. Kind of. Kind like of. I, I vaguely saw bits and pieces of it. Fellas should, this, should this not happen on the podcast? We'll talk about this after the podcast. That's, I don't think that's a, that's a podcast-worthy conversation. Yes, the greater good. Shout out to Canyon. Shout out to WrestleJoy. <laughs> if it still is a WrestleJoy. Oh, what a shite. Just shit, hey, hey. No, some sort of breaking news popped up on my screen. It's just absolute drivel. <laughs> a place has been nuclear bombed. Ugh. Who cares? <laughs> no, it's it's a, not a wrestling quiz, I don't care. NFL. It better not be Baltimore and get the damn game getting pushed back again. No, it's about Doug Peterson being on the hot seat. Like, please stop it. It's, um, Doug Peterson is the head coach for who, Clive? The Pittsburgh. Yo, you better get this. Doug Peterson is the head coach for the Pittsburgh Papers. <laughs> what did <that> mean? <laughs> Yeah, might as well be, because he won't be the head coach of the Eagles by the end of the year. <laughs> I assure you, he will. The Seattle Sonics have re- revived themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to you getting the name right, though. That was the team called the Seattle Sonics. It used to be the basketball team. The only reason I know that is because of Elias. Oh, this is fantastic. I mean, Doug Pearson just won the Super Bowl three years ago. That don't mean shit. People been fired for less. But, and also led a, a, a banged up team to the playoffs the last two years. People um, been fired talk, for talk, less. We're talking about NFL here. Let's just move on. We'll have this discussion off air. The Ricky and Clive uh, Hand Egg podcast. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to find a quiz. This has just been a completely unprepared. This. I know, but yeah. we've, because we've got some uh, fun games to play later on. See, they should have. Uh, what is to the What is to the right of Seattle? Washington, sorry. What is to the right of Washington? I don't. Is there a place near? Is there a, a town or a city up northwest that starts with M? Like a major city? Uh huh. Northwest. What's Michigan? No, Michigan is is kind of straight north. Montana is a state, which is two states away from right. from Washington. So Seattle Sonics should have a a blood rivalry with Montana, and the, their team could be the Montana Mario's. <laughs> <laughs> That's so bad. <laughs> Nobody lives in Montana, by the way, for the record. Shout out to those 15 people that live in Montana that might listen to the show. But nobody lives in Montana. Apart from... I would love to do a quiz on American states. You want to do that real quick? I can do that for you real quick. Oh, I'd love to do that. Is Montana not the militia people? Look at you! There was a militia people in Montana. How do you know about American news? Uh... It was no because, see, was Michael be, right, Wills and, and please don't take offence to this ranch, right? No, not at all. Because we in this and outside world, we understand that there's more countries out there than just America. Now, I know some of you guys outside, you guys in America seem to think it's the only <laughs> country in the world. <laughs> it's just, I love that because it's the truth. Yes, <laughs> you're imperialism. You're absolutely right. Nothing else matters but us. <laughs> You're absolutely right. But to be fair, in a country like Scotland, you have to because you are a, I don't even know, is Scotland a country or is Scotland a, it has a province? Country. It's, a country. it's a country. So what what do you consider the UK then? A shithole. A <laughs> shithole. All right. Do you want me to do the states, do you want me to do the states quiz? Dictatorship. <laughs> what? Um, All right, UK, sh- right, okay. Yes. Shout out to our English listeners, Dan, and others. I like okay. you guys. You guys you guys are welcome to come up here. Well, Dan. Oh, they get away. <laughs> you gonna let <laughs> you gonna let the Welshman come up there too? 
Oh, definitely. Oh. We have we have plenty of sheep up here for him. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm trying to have Tali on the podcast this week, so I'm going to make sure I made that joke. Um, uh, you're a good guy. I have uh, a wrestling quiz if you want okay, to give okay, you. Okay, okay, okay. But I'd like to do the, the States one as well if we can. I mean, right. I can give you a quick, real fast one, yeah. Like five quick questions, sure. What? Right, so Clive, what was your buzzer again? Who better than Canyon? You changed it. Rance? It's be- I'm changing my mind to uh, the Iron Sheik, USA Hack Tui. <laughs> right, question number one. Where did the 2020 Royal Rumble take place? Hack Tui. Yes. Bless you. It's not fair. Thank you. That's not fair. I was at that Rumble. It was here in Houston. Correct. <laughs> FYI, all these questions are about the 2020 Royal Rumble. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's I forgot. Fair. I forgot it was in Houston. I'm not gonna lie. You have a history. <laughs> you've got. You have a history of being a a, a partial quizmaster. Anyway, it's fine. Shout out to Josh. <laughs> exactly. He got, yes. He got his t-shirt. Um, question number two: Which match opened the main show? I'm sorry. Can oh, I? Uh, who better than Canyon? The big dog yeah. versus King Corbin. Yes. I want. I feel like I want to give you opportunities because it's not fair if I just get all these answers correct. Question number three. Who entered the Women's Royal Rumble at number eight? Was it Mighty Molly, Liv Morgan or Mandy Rose? Hatui. Yep. Mighty Molly. It's incorrect. Oh, who better than Canyon? Number yep. eight. Mandy Rose. Correct. You remember that? No. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> Question number four. Which Royal Rumble match was it longer? Was longer? Hack to it. Yep. Men's. Correct. Question number three. What was the shortest match of the evening? Was You're it... talking just main show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it Becky Lynch, Asker, Bailey, Lacey Evans? Oh God! Those are, that's it. That's those two choices. Yep. Actually. Yep. Bailey, Lacey Evans. I took a nap during that. It had to be fast. Correct. That was also the worst match of the Royal Rumble pay per view. That was terrible. That was... It was. However. Carl and I popped hard for Lacey's entrance because we were doing the little Lacey walk the whole day. <laughs> it's just one of the most stifling matches I've seen. Just pish. It was pretty bad. Question number six. What was the longest match of the evening, not including the Royal Rumble matches? Actually. <sighs> yep. Fiend and Daniel Bryan. Incorrect. Who better than Canyon? Yep. Big dog and Rome. Uh, big dog and Corbin. Correct. Was that longer than Fane and Brian? Hmm. I think that opening match went over a good nearly twenty-five minutes. Well, it's because they decided to take their ass to the outfield. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know, and just do everything. It was a great match. It was fantastic. At which number? So, question number seven. At which number did Edge enter the Royal Rumble? Actually. Yep. Believe it's twenty three. Same correct. Who better than Canyon? Yep. Twenty one. Correct. How, how do you know this? Are you guessing? By the way, Clive's up five two here. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, no, True or... I'm not guessing. Some of them I'm guessing, but not True that or one. false. Brock Lesnar broke the record for most eliminations in a row. Actually, match. true, true. It's incorrect. <laughs> well, oh, who better than Canyon Falls? He broke the record. He eliminated sure? thirteen people. He eliminated thirteen people. Let me double check this. How many did the record made? was eleven? Did he? 
did he knock 13 out or did some fall out at the same time? It was still because of him. He threw them over. He eliminated every person until Drew, I think, was number... Of, like, I know it was like 15 or something. Okay. Because it didn't eliminate Ricochet. No, because it was Ricochet that gave him the low blow and Drew gave him the... Are you, are you, are you counting Braun at the, at, in Saudi Arabia? Uh, God, I hope what culture that? This is where I've got the quiz from. Oh, you should oh, have said. Oh, what culture. Oh, my God. They've got a history of incorrect shit on their quizzes. Uh, I mean, I come, to be fair, I completely forgot. Just give, the quiz. I genuinely thought it was your turn. Give them the point. Okay. No, no, it's okay. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. No, I mean, you need it. So, t- yes. No, so Brack you, eliminated 13 not, people. Yep, so not including Braun. That's correct. Thank you. Shit. I was like, I was there. I remember that. Uh, oh. Who entered at number 17 in the Men's Royal Rumble? Was it John Morrison, Drew, Ricochet, or The Miz? Hmm. Um, uh, talk to it. Yep. I'm going to say The Miz. Correct. The reason is because Morrison was, was very early. Drew came in at like 13 or 14. Ricochet came right before him. So, yep. yeah. Do you remember so, the 2016 Royal Rumble? Brock Lesnar was in it. And uh, Miz went to the commentary table. Aye, and he was <laughs> talking about him taking people to Suplex City, and I said, well, I'll be taking people to Misney World. I thought it was amazing. <laughs> what what a line. <laughs> Question number 10. Brian, you need this to tie. I okay. have an absolutely fantastic tiebreaker oh, question. He's about to how fuck many, me up, <laughs> How many eliminations did Drew McIntyre have? Oh, fuck. Uh, uh, who better than Canyon? Yep. Two. What? Incorrect. Way more than two. Um, how two? Ranch. Yep. Six. Correct. Right, here we I had go. to count them in my mind. I had to count them in my mind because it was he eliminated he eliminated Brock he eliminated Roman he eliminated <sighs> Seth <laughs> um, he eliminated. Dolph, I think. I think he limited AJ and like one other person. Yeah, it was two, so yeah, six. Isn't that interesting? Here we go. Hold, hold on, tiebreaker. Hold on. He eliminated Brock, AJ, Seth, Roman, and Ziggler. Who has he fought this year, and who is he going to fight? Ain't that some shit? Ain't that some shit? <laughs> huh. Huh. Long term storytelling. I see. <laughs> right, Tio, right. here we go. I'm ready to get I'm ready to get screwed over by this tiebreaker. <laughs> yes. so tiebreaker right. question. Funny enough there's only one point that's worth. Kazuchiko Hada oh, was known That's our as, show, guys. We'll see you later. Was known as what during his Impact of TNA oh, or whatever oh, it was run. Yes. Okado. Or Okado or whatever it was. Like Kato or Okado or some shit like that. He was basically the Green Hornets guy with the mask. It was like Okado or Kato or something like that. Yes. Come on, come on, Rick. Don't do it like that. <laughs> is that your final answer? Damn right it is. Find out next week on the Rick and Clive Wrestling Show. <laughs> oh I'm God. not going to lie to you, right? I thought it was just Okada. Oh, no, he didn't. Sorry. Yes, you were right. Okato. And he was... Um, was he not aligned with Samoa Joe or sure. some, something like that? So I don't know if he was like sidekick or he was like his, you know, his bitch or whatever. I can't remember. So there's there's a comic called the Green Hornet, and the Green Hornet is basically like a like a low budget, less cool Batman without the armor, 
but he has a car and like he solves crimes. But his but his driver, aka the real hero, is this Asian dude named Kato. And so they literally just copied that with him and they called him Old Kato. And he dressed mm-hmm. exactly like him with the with the driver's hat and the mask on and everything. So yeah. I remember that vividly. Congratulations, Rance. Back from, had to come from behind on that one. Uh, this is a PG show. What's your language? <laughs> had to come in, but don't play. Um, do you want to? Do you want to ask a couple questions about about American states? Let's go for it, and then we'll, yes. Then we'll, <laughs> okay. What's the? Do I do I need to ask for your buzzers? No, not mine. Okay. I will. I'm going to change mine. And you didn't I give one. Go, uh... You didn't give a buzz. No, mine, well, mine, 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 mine from day one has always been the same. I spit in the I face of people who want to kill. But yeah. for this one, I will change it and I will go with, with the land of a free. A word? What wrestler said that? Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Number one. What is the biggest state in America? Land of three. Okay, go ahead. Texas. Who be- who bigger who better than Canyon? Yes, sir. Alaska. Five. Alaska is the biggest oh, state. Oh damn it, so it is. Fantastic. What is the smallest state in America? Who better than Canyon? Yes, Clive. Rhode Island. Very well done. Thank you. Very well. Okay. Down. What is the most populous state? Which state has the most people? Hmm. Who better than Canyon? Clive. New York? No. Good hmm. try. Well, Ricky, it must have been uh, the other one, other one. Land over freeze. Either going to be Texas or California, so I'll go California. That's correct. California is the most popular state in the country. Okay, we get just a little, little, little more difficult. What was the original capital of America? Oof. Not Washington D.C. The original capital. To, and to make it, to to give you a hint, it is a major city. You guys all know. I spent uh, I spent a face with one The land of a free. Uh, uh, yes, sir. New York City. No, good try. <laughs> you sounded so sure of yourself there. I was. I was very sure of myself. Good try. Hey, it's obviously somewhere in the east. Yes, it's somewhere in the east. First? Yes. I'm going to go a bit. The very the first official capital. Yes. What? I'm going to be a bit left field. Okay. Who better than Canyon? Was it Nassau? That's way left field, because, yeah, no, good right. try. I was just thinking of the pirates and shit. Right. Ricky is going to guess. be pissed off. I want another guess. I'm going, I'm going for another guess. I'm going for another Go guess. Go ahead. Go ahead. The land of a free. Yes, sir. <sighs> the greatest American sports team playing in this city. Wrong. Wrong. Where- and they wear mid and they wear midnight and they wear midnight green. Yes, it's Philadelphia. Yes. Okay. Um, that makes sense, actually. Uh, uh, yeah. Right. Okay. So you know that the the document that consider that that uh, the name of the document that basically made us a country is called the Constitution. Mm-hmm. But there was a document. That, that predates the Constitution that set the initial rules of this new land. Do you know the name of that document? Who better than Canyon? Yes, sir. Is it the Declaration of Independence? No. I bet you Kyle Moores is sitting there going, you fucking idiots. <laughs> <laughs> land. Land of the free. Yes, sir. Shout out to Kyle because I feel like I've got this right. Okay. Is it... Now, I might get some of the words mixed up, but I That's would okay. like the answer to it. Uh, is it something like the Confederate 
article or something like that? Or the Confederation no. so article? All oh, three of those things you just mentioned are basically the same document. <laughs> oh, is it the Um okay, well let me make it let me make it a little easier. Is it the American what Observer the... Newsletter? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it might as well be called that, right? What is the name of the boat that the original people, I'm not gonna call them pilgrims or settlers, but that they came over in? What's the name of the of the boat? Oh, shit. You guys may not know this. If you don't, I apologize. No, it's on the tip of my tongue, and it's, it's a... Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> well, if that was the case, we would, I, I damn sure wouldn't be here <laughs> if that was the case. Ah, uh, it's a Spanish name. It's not a Spanish name. It's not a Spanish name. You're thinking of Christopher Columbus's boats. Do you know those? No. The name, no, the th- three names of Columbus's is, boats. Is it something flower? Yes, something flower. Very, very well, very well done. Mayflower. Right. The Mayflower Compact was the very first thing that they signed. Um. Okay, I'll give you one more, and I'm gonna leave you alone because I know I'm starting to ask more difficult questions. I apologize. I mean, I can ask you simple questions like, "What's like the biggest city in America is what?" City. Did you say city? The biggest city in America, yeah. Like population wise. Los Angeles? No. New York? New York is the biggest, yeah. I don't want to ask y'all simple questions like that. Um I wanna I wanna really really want to see your American knowledge, but so you we've been told the lie that Columbus discovered America is not true. Columbus landed in the West Indies and there were people here already. What is uh, who is America named after? Oh, I, uh, the who better than Canada? I got you. I, don't worry about it. I got you. Yes, Clive. <laughs> now, I don't know his full name, but the name Amerigo is in there. Amerigo Vespucci. Very well done. Very well done. I got. I got a question for you. What nationality was Christopher Columbus? Canadian. <laughs> He didn't make it here, so of course it couldn't be Canadian. Uh, he's Italian. Is he Italian? I know he he may be Italian, but I know he 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 sailed under the Portuguese flag. But he may be Italian, actually. All right. I mean, that uh, if you want to go more cool, but you guys did well for like regular knowledge because I can get. I don't want to get too deep, and I don't want to get too simple. Well, well done. Thank you. Yeah. I got one, I got one more for you, and this is this is one <laughs> that will help you. But this this is one that will help you because this is on the citizenship test. Right. What was the first official state? Remember, there were thirteen colonies that were the first states. What was what was declared the first official state? Wait, this is on the actual. Is it? I believe so. Who better than Canyon? Yes, sir. Oh, it's not even a state. Shit. What was you gonna say? I was gonna say New, I was going to say New England. No, no. So no, I said Boston. New, right. So I've narrowed it down to. to New England is actually like five different uh, states. It's an area. I've not. I've narrowed it, narrowed it down to three. Okay. Tell me your three, and I'll tell you if, if one of those three is correct. New Jersey. Delaware. Maybe. In Pennsylvania. One of those three is correct. I am going with... I mean, if Philadelphia was the first ever capital, it must be Pennsylvania. Uh, that's what I was thinking. Delaware. It's Delaware. You looked it up. <laughs> that you part looked I did there. I would, have said, I would have said Pennsylvania, just purely because if that's the first capital, then surely... Makes sense. Yeah. It's it's really interesting if you look at why these states became states. Like Pennsylvania was created by like I believe the the, the Quakers or something. Like and and uh, Rhode Island was created by like all these states were created by like religious like crazy ass people. So it's crazy to see where they came from. But well done. Hey, give yourselves a round of applause. Would you like to know how small Scotland actually is in comparison to America? What is it? It's like the size of like Alabama. It's like the size of like North Carolina. 
That's enough. bigger than I thought it was. That's bigger like, than I thought it was. Like, not, in fact, no, so it could be South Carolina. Okay. South looks smaller, so it's, so it's tiny. Like, you can drive from one end of the country, and, like, from here to, say, Fife, where my in-laws are from, in, like, an hour and 20 minutes, and that's basically from one end of the country to the other. From one end to Texas, from one end of Texas, from, I live in Houston. Houston is an hour and a half from the border of Louisiana. If I drive from Houston to El Paso, which is on the other end of the state, it's going to take me 12 to 18 hours. (laughs) (laughs) Ridiculous. That's just... Yes. Unnecessary. That's like driving... That's like driving from... What's at the bottom of, uh, of, of England? Newcastle, maybe? London? It's it's like driving London. to Lon- it's just like from yeah, yeah, because London, London is on London's on the channel. Yeah, from, that's like driving from London to, all the way up to like the tippy tippy top of Scotland. Yeah, and that's that's it like takes, six it hours. It takes us it takes us seven hours or so, just about seven hours to get to London. So we could drive to London and back home, and you still wouldn't have travelled the, uh, the, the state of Texas. Yep, need to get a faster <sighs> car. <laughs> need to get a faster what car? <laughs> to fucking cut that country like in quarters. You you want us to drive the autobahn? Have you seen American drivers? <laughs> well, the the lanes are wide enough. I know, but they're driving on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> oh God! There we go. On that note, uh... no, I will kid you not. See, when I was in New York, and you experienced that for the first time in your life, you. I was terrified sitting in that taxi. I was like, oh my God, like, because <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, what? It felt so strange. That's fantastic. Rance, thank you for coming on tonight. Thank you for having me. I know we didn't talk about shit, but it was fantastic. Uh, do you want to tell the listeners where you also talk shit? Other shit? Um, yeah. Um, I talk shit on the Outsider's Edge podcast at Outsider's Edge CS. Um, I also talk, I talk wrestling shit on the Outsider's Edge podcast. I talk sports shit on three men weave at three underscore men weave. I talk entertainment shit and nerd shit on bandwagon's nerd podcast at bandwagon nerds. And I just talk general shit on the chair shot and at it's Ray cash R E Y as in Mysterio C A S H as in dollars. Come see the shit I talk. And we have been the Ricky and Clive wrestling show, part of the social suplex podcast network where you'll have other shows such as one nation radio, keeping it strong still grown men watch this shit. Great match generator, all things elite eight bit suplex podcast and grave consequences. You can get us on social suplex.com as well. And any columns that we write, you can get them sent directly to your email inbox if you press the subscribe button. Don't forget to head over to applepodcasts.com, give us a nice five-star review there. In the show notes, you'll see links to donating to the show or donating to the social podcast network in general. There's also links to the t-shirt page at Social Suplex. If you type in Social Suplex at prowrestlingtees.net, um, Wrestling Squared Circle is a Facebook group and we are at Ricky and Clive on Twitter and apart from a few stammers that was one of the best plugs I've done in a long long time oh we like when you mess them up Ricky anything you want to add no <laughs> start finish how you start great right I mean, to be, it was like I wasn't. We didn't really talk much about this episode. It was more so planning for the next one. Aye, Let's... so it was just kind of all over the place tonight. But hey ho, that's classic. I think I can cry. That's classic, Ranson. Uh, classic Ralph from the park. <laughs> featuring featuring Ray Raymond. Everybody loves Raymond. Oh, that's a great. That's a fucking great <laughs> podcast idea. Right. What, to review everybody yeah. else, Raymond? Yeah, I'll definitely try that to see if that gets season assisted. <laughs> everybody loves Carl and Kyle. Do they? I'm, I, I'm just I asking. Know. I'm just. I mean, Carl, Carl gets a lot of heat on the old Twitter. He wants to get a lot of heat on the old Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's let's go. Let's get ready for the. 
the big event of our night. And ladies and gents, enjoy Moxley versus <coughs> Omega and enjoy the living daylights out of war games. Good night. Take care, folks. Thank you for listening to the Ricky and Clive Wrestling Podcast. We'll see you next time. See you next time.